we're live <clears throat> uh, with our February 8th um, Public Utility Commission meeting, um, 6 o'clock p.m. I thank everybody for coming, our mayor, Commissioner Thompson, attorneys, and the A-team, and all of the Utility Commission employees. Thank you for all the good that you do for all of our citizens, our businesses here in Fort Valley and the County of Peach. I thank you. Um, before I bring this meeting to order, I, I, I want to say something about this COVID. Um, um, we still have to wear our mask, everybody. Let's wear our mask, mask up. It takes all of us. We, we all have to participate. And I know staying at home for some of the older um, citizens is a little tough and some that are physically challenged, it's a little tough, but you know, we may have to just pause and, 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 and take a breath and, and, and notice how we feel. Uh, take breaks from upsetting conflict, confrontational stuff. Um, take care of yourself, take care of your body. Reach out to someone, stay connected. Let somebody know, you know, and those of us that are, that are mobile, drive by, knock on the door and say hello, you know. Um, look out for our people, this is us, you know, our folks. And with that, I thank you um, um, for bearing with me and I'll bring this meeting to order. Thank you so much. Uh, Commissioner Thompson, would you lead us in a word of prayer, please? Yes, uh, let us all bow our heads. Our Heavenly <laughs> Father, we come before you this day asking for your guidance and direction in our lives. Concerning this Utilities Commission uh, meeting in the citizens in Fort Valley, Father, your word says that we, if we acknowledge you in all our ways, that you would direct our path. Father, we're asking that you please direct our path. We seek your guidance and we thank you in advance for divinely speaking to our hearts, giving us your answer of peace and guiding us in the right path. And we ask and pray all these things in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen, Father. Amen. Uh, am I muted? No, no. Uh, Al, you muted. I was muted. Uh, <laughs> okay. Thank you, Commissioner Thompson. Um, um, we're going to move with uh, item B, approval of the agenda. And what we have, Mr. Watson wanted to amend the agenda. I've got two items to add. Uh, after the sewer service B on new business, I would like to add two items. The first one is sod farm water line. And the second one is G for loan modification for the high school project. And uh, Mr. Charles is here to speak to that when we get to it. Okay, that's a uh, sod farm after our sewer and G for loan modification after the sod farm, correct? Correct. That's a correct. I thank you uh, for all those uh, for commissioners. Uh, could I get a motion to uh, amend the agenda and then a uh, a vote to amend this agenda for Mr. Watson. So move. Moves. All right. Uh, show hands by the vote to amend the agenda. Thank you so much. And I trust all okay. is all have had the opportunity to um, read the minutes. I need a motion. I intend a motion and a vote for the approval of the minutes for the public meeting of January 11, 2020. Move approval for a motion. Motion. Go ahead. Second. 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 Motion <laughs> second. All right. By show of hands, a vote to uh, accept the minutes, approval of the minutes. With Miss Penny having their opportunity, give her the opportunity to make any grammatical corrections. All right. Moving on to item number three, Department's Activity Overview, January 2021, Financial Overview and Operations Overview. 
Okay, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we talked about in quite a bit of detail about the revenue and expense report uh, year to date as of December the 31st. That would be the first three months of the year. I think you, uh, I think you all have a copy of that. I'd refer you to it now. Uh, under the top section is operating revenues. In the budget, you'll see where we had anticipated uh, 5,663,000 as revenue budgeted. We actually had 5,764,000 that was uh, in revenue. 5,724,000 of that was uh, billed revenue. So the total was 5,764,000. That was $100,687 more than we had budgeted. The next section is cost of goods sold. We have to purchase gas and electricity on the wholesale market for resale. Under total cost of goods sold, you'll see we had budgeted 5,365,000. Actually, the cost of the goods sold was uh, 52,000 greater, which is 3,617,000. You subtract the cost of code sold from the revenue and you have your gross margin. We had budgeted $2,098,000 uh, for the budget for gross margin. It actually came in at $2,146,000. Ned, excuse me. Um, for some reason, I don't have, I don't think I have that sheet. Was that the revenue and expense report that year to date as of December 31st? Did you talk? Oh, okay. Yeah. Same thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm the, uh, the next section concerns expenses, the operating income. If you go to the bottom line of that under total expenses, it's a number that is bolted. On the right, you'll see the budget amount we had total. I mean, we had budgeted 2,654,000. The actual total expenses was 2,180,000. That's $473,000 less than we had budgeted. If you'll look up the uh, expense section to the top one, it says personnel services. You can see we had budgeted 622,000. It actually came in at 482. That was mainly due to some vacancies we have that had been budgeted for the employees are now gone. So all their salary and benefits accrue to that uh, total. Underneath is purchase services, 386,000 we had budgeted. It actually came in at 196,000. <clears> then as you go down the columns, all of those you will see on the right is what we had budgeted. The numbers on the left reflect the actual expenditures. All of them are for the most part are less than what we had budgeted. So that ends up, uh, rather than uh, under the operating income all the way to the right, you'll see we had budgeted $555,000 negative uh, operating income. It actually has turned out to be $34,000. That's a $521,000 swing to the good. Can I um, ask a question? Can I interrupt you? I'm sorry. Can I ask sure. a question? And, and you uh, indicated that some of them were personnel services where people have left and we have not replaced them. Have, have you noticed any drop in the quality of service as a result of those people being gone? No, but the people who are here are working harder, I would add, okay. and, and okay. some are working overtime. But for the most part, people are just, you know, chinching up and taking care of the slack that's uh, caused by the employees that have left. Okay. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, that's all I have on the uh, financial overview. As I said, we talked about this in, last week in the work session. Unless you have further questions, we'll move on to the operations overview. I do have a question, uh, Mr. Watson, uh, in reference to the personnel. I'm sorry. I kind of overlooked that. Uh, you said before that there were three positions uh, down, um, I think it was the water and waste. Are we do are we looking to to hire those people uh, uh, those to replace 
someone to replace them? Those or? three positions were in the electrical department, only in the electrical department. And we have it, or extending okay. orders now, uh, extended offers now for three people to be rehired, uh, a couple of apprentices and a lineman. Uh, so that those three positions are being filled. We also have some vacancies are, that are developing on the water and the wastewater. We have three or four employees that will be retiring in the next couple of months or so. So we're already out looking for replacements for those. But the three positions I was talking about were on the electrical, we're in the electrical department. Thank you. Okay, if you go to your activity reports, the first one is Director of Financial Services. The managers of all these departments just put down the main things they had been taken care of in their departments, the things they were focusing on. So I won't read all down through them and they're just mundane things. I will point out a few things. On the Director of Financial Services, about halfway down or a third of the way down, you'll see completed payroll conversion to ADP. That is a new payroll software that we have uh, installed that allows uh, more efficient use of this clocking in and clocking out and allows employees to clock uh, from computers and it maintains a really good uh, payroll service. Uh, further on down, you'll see the 1099s were completed in mail. These 1099s are, are for employees or that were not corporate uh, that we have paid more than $600. So a lot of that falls on the contractors, the 1099s. Beneath that's W-2s. All of our employees' W-2s have been completed and mailed. The last one is pretty interesting, I think. Total COVID-19 assistance approved to date. This goes back uh, when the first COVID-19 uh, plan was put into place. We've had 231 vouchers, which totals $49,641 that uh, that have, has been provided for employees requesting uh, assistance. And those are broken down right beneath that to the Middle Georgia Community Action Agency, the CARES program, and Habitat is one that was, we did not fund. It just happened to be somebody contributed to that and it fell under the assistance program. But you can see uh, $12,600 was paid through the MGCAA, 36, almost 37,000 paid through the CARES program. So uh, that's $49,641. Now the Utility Commission transferred $150 to that program uh, from April to 2020. There's been 50,000 from April 2020 till now uh, has been spent and $100,000 was sent to Middle Georgia Community Action Committee, uh, agency, I'm sorry. So we have 150 that's been transferred to those two agencies and uh, almost $50,000 has been uh, dispersed. Going down to the customer service manager report, you'll see the first line, 5,550 payments were made. The total payments for, for uh, utilities used in January is 2,141,000. Further on down under the drive-through payments, we're still getting really a lot of use out of this drive-through payments. When I left work today, traffic was backed up all the way to Anthon Drive from down to drive-through. So it's really being used heavily. We've had 2,053 customers for the month of January use the drive-through and we had 20 business days in the month. This, is the, this was a late uh, opening day, right? Because it's a payment yes. day. Yes. Okay. Open until six. Right. Right. So that makes it very convenient. Yeah, very convenient. Every yeah. uh, pay by five day is now pay by six. Yeah. Okay. The next page uh, continues on uh, the uh, customer service and financial administration. It's 524 customers are utilizing the electronic draft process. The next on the bottom of that section is 90 customers were billed under the 12 month average payment plan. <clears throat> the next section is Main Street Financing Program. I just wanna dwell on that just for a minute. This is a program um, by the Municipal Gas Authority of Georgia and the Utility Commission. We are co-partnering co with that. 
MEAG provides the funding. The Utility Commission sort of takes care of it where our customers can borrow up to $5,000 through this program <clears throat> to pay for gas powered appliances. We only have 12 customers that have taken advantage of that program. I'm surprised. I thought it would be a lot more, be a lot more participation in it. But uh, employees, I meant uh, our customers can borrow up to $5,000 on that program. Uh, you can, you don't have to, you can borrow 2,000 or whatever, but you can borrow 5,000 max up to 60 months. And you don't have interest on those payments. You do have or have a, a small $5 per month charge on that. $2 of it goes to the utility commission for the administration part of it. $3 go to MEAG, but there's no interest paid on that. So it's a good program if anybody needs any gas appliances and you, you know, buy it on time, so to speak, I would advise using this. Uh, you can go call us and get some applications to make for that program. It's a really good program. I, I have been talking it up because I've been a personal user of it. And I know it is a good program, but I have been talking it up. It's just when you start saying five more dollars, you got to add on. <laughs> Five more dollars <throat> for a convenience of what you got to pay five thousand dollars up front for is uh is not something to fuss about. It's like um, we fuss about the the vaccine, but uh, what it's going to save us for is uh is better than fussing about the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a really good program. It is. I'm surprised we've only had twelve customers participating in it, but you know it's out there in case anyone wants it. <clears throat> on down the electrical and telecommunications, we had two outages this month. One of them was on Wolfolk Road, caused by a downed tree, and the other one was just over overloaded, and they've repaired that now and fixed it, so it wouldn't have, certain should not happen again. Everything after that is just responses that electrical department has made. You'll see the last one, Valley High Apartments. That's a new place we all aware of. They're now requesting eleven security lights. Uh, those are 250 watt LED lights from a utility standpoint. That would be a good uh, a good purchase. It's $35 a piece, and they have 11 of them, so that's $385 to the commission a month. But it's a good program, uh, and it apparently will light up that Valley High apartment complex pretty well. Moving to the next page on the operations telecommunication department, you can see the four or five things that they have listed there as they've taken care of. They've also been helping the electrical department going back to what the mayor said. They've been short for a couple of months and the telecom people have been helping them out. In, in information technology and ID, IT department, uh, second bullet down, Tantalus is on site for two days of training. That is a new AMI uh, meter reading that we have that's automatic. It's a new software we have and Tantalus is, is the pro provider of that. And uh, they've been on site for a while training it. Uh, fourth, fourth bullet down, the, uh, the information technology department has installed iPads on the time clocks and train employees for the new ADT program, uh, payroll program I was talking about under the, fi under the uh, finance area. Uh, down to the PBX, you'll see top line. We've had 6,336 calls into and out of the utility commission, which is averaging over 200 a day. Down at the bottom of that section, calls directly to customer service. They had 2,579 calls going into customer service, wait time of 24 seconds. Very good, I think. Each call averaged two minutes and 29 seconds. Under the spam firewall, I thought this was a very interesting uh, note. Great control. You'll see 25,700 and uh, 257,204 spam calls that have been blocked on our incoming email just this month. So that is a very important. Uh, firewall that we have and it's on a lot of those uh, spam calls you would have viruses attached to them other things like that but that's uh, it that's it's hard to believe we've had 257,000 in one month but that's the case 
Next, next uh, one, and I think the net last page is the gas department. Uh, normal and things they've been doing. I'd like to call your attention to one thing. I was talking to Trey, the foreman of that department today. We were talking about the odorant that put in natural gas. And since it's odorless, you have to put in something that smells bad so you can smell the gas. It is a, a melicon is what that is. That odorant is only produced in France. Used to be produced elsewhere, only in France now. So it's a very expensive, it has to be shipped over. And as Trey was saying, it comes out of France because it's just a really foul smelling, stinking perfume that we put into the gas department, the gas lines. The bottom line prepared everything to 7100 reporting to PSC. Every February, the gas department has to submit to the PSC every gas line that's been changed on our system, that's been added, that's been deleted, that's been altered in any way uh, that has to be pro provided to the PSC. Water department, you'll see next to the last bullet, they've pumped 48 million gallons of water this month. A lot of water, under wastewater. Uh, they, have, they attended the pre-con meeting for the truck stop project. And I think the mayor indicated this in the work session that work is estimated to begin March the 15th on that project. About a third of the way down, pressure clean, 8,592 feet of sewer mains. The sewer department collects, uh, selects streets every month to go in with the, the cleaning apparatus and clean all the sewers and blow them out and try to keep them unclogged. Uh, as well as the service laterals, they've done four of those down on those streets that show indicated. Next to the bottom bullet, you'll see that the, the wastewater plant treated 32 million gallons, almost 33 million gallons of wastewater this month. That is 66% of the water that was pumped. We pump 48 million to our customers and they return it to us at 66% of that for treatment to be released to Bay Creek. Some of that uh, that has to be treated is also rainwater. We have a lot of uh, infusion and infiltration in our sewer system that uh, the wastewater plant is constantly working on trying to remedy that stormwater from getting into our sewer system. That's all I have on the operations activity report, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Ned, um, uh, for that financial overview and operations report uh, for this February 8th meeting. Um, next to line, any, any questions for Mr. Watson from uh, Commissioner Thompson or Mayor? No questions, moving on to the next item. Thank you so much. Um, next item with old business, we have none listed for old business. So we'll go on to our new business, USDA Project A Emergency Generator. We talked about this last week in the work session. I just need a motion made. If uh, it meets with your approval of what we would like to do. This USDA project concerns the new well elevated tank and treatment plant uh, right off the Ira Hicks Boulevard down at the corner. That project has an emergency generator that's powered by diesel. We would like to and present it to you for approval that we convert that uh, diesel engine generator to a gas, natural gas power generator. The reasons just, if I can just go through them quickly. Uh, if we use diesel, we'll have to have two big tanks for diesel fuel. The EPD standard says you have to have containment for any uh, petroleum products that you have on site that equals 110% of the volume you have in that petroleum. So if we had diesel, we would have to build containment or berm to contain all of that plus 10% in case of a spill. Also in diesel, if you don't uh, go through it often, you will have you have algae that's uh, in the in the tank as well as a generator and moisture. Primarily, we already have natural gas at that site, so it's not a matter of having to pipe natural gas there. We already have it. 
we don't have any control over the price of diesel fuel going forward. It could go dramatically up. Natural gas could also go up. But one thing we know about natural gas is that we are buying it wholesale off the pipeline. So whatever we pay for natural gas would be the lowest price you could get anywhere. If you agree to do this and we get that, and, and it requires, if we go to natural gas, it requires a larger generator just because of the output of the diesel fuel versus natural gas. But our plan would be if we go to the natural gas generator, we could also convert the uh, lift station that is in Gano, transfer it over to the emergency generator, this new one, and we could use the emergency generator at the Gano lift station at another lift station. We have four or five that do not have any emergency generation there, so we could use that one. The natural gas, these uh, natural gas uh, generator would be larger, as I said, because of the, the different uh, power that's produced by the diesel over natural gas. The bad thing about all of this is the natural gas diesel generator will cost $55,000 more than the diesel. That $55,000 can be paid from the contingency fund that's included in this project. Remember, we've already obligated 124,000 out of that contingency fund. So this will just add to it. The contingency fund is $200,000. So that would be getting close to the limit of this contingency fund. And I don't know what's gonna happen later on. We may need more and we may need some more changes. But anyway, I think changing to natural gas would be a smart move looking forward years ahead. I think the cost of the natural gas engine, even though with a higher purchase price, the cost would be leveled out and less over the long term. And we wouldn't have to be messing around with diesel fuel all the time. So uh, I would submit that to you uh, for a motion if the utility commissioner is agree to that and we can either make the change order or I don't think it's necessary, but if so, we'll do that. If not, we'll, we will coordinate with the contracts to amend that emergency generator from diesel to natural gas. Mr. Chairman, as I stated in the, um, in the work session and after I asked around a little bit, I still feel the same way. Uh, with the cost of diesel being so much higher than natural gas is now, I uh, kind of feel like it's going to be that way for a while. Um, we almost seem like we're in a mode of you pay extra now, you pay up later. And so I, 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 if I'm in order, I would like to make a motion that we make the conversion uh, from the diesel to the national to the natural gas. Before we motion that, uh, Mayor, I have a yes. question, please. Okay. Um, Mr. Watson, you said that uh, um, we would move the old uh, diesel generator to someplace else. Do you have any place in mind? I have two questions. In addition to that, you said that our contingency fund is $200,000 and, and the other one will cost, the natural gas will cost $55,000 more. What is that complete total? Do you have that at hand or? Mr. Chair, excuse me, uh, Ms. Rose, but for the sake of uh, the parliamentary procedure part of it, I think it would be first to make the motion and then second it, and then discuss it afterwards. May uh, I, 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 you're correct. I'll entertain the motion on, on, on this, and then okay. we'll have discussion. Entertain the motion. I need a motion and a second. I've already motioned it. If second. Okay. Okay. All right, motion and second. Now we do the discussion. Okay, uh, Ms. Thompson, we, we can use the emergency generator that's at the Gaino lift station. If we remove that, we can put it in any of several lift stations in town. One that comes to mind is the old high school. It has a lift station that does not have a generator. And there's two or three other lift stations scattered around town that do not have emergency generation. And to your uh, question on cost, the contingency fund added to this project of 4.35 million, I think it was, it was $200,000. 
we had a cost uh, increase of 124,000, I think was approved in the November uh, meeting because of the increase in material and vendor costs that was taken from the contingency. That's 124,000. So if you approve this 55,000, we can re we can take that from the contingency fund as well. So that'll put the contingency fund around 175,000 being used from it. Uh, that's not to say we can't save more money from it or from somewhere else to cover the cost of this. Otherwise, it would have to come from reserves. In, in other words, Mr. Watson, we, we, we're not, it's, it's money that's already allocated for the project. We don't, have, we don't have to hunt for it from anywhere else. Correct. All right. Any other discussion? All right, motion and second, I'll entertain a vote. All those in favor for uh, upgrading or uh, changing out the emergency generator from diesel to natural gas um, by a show of hands, we we'll vote for it. Got it, Ms. Penny? I got it, thank you. All right, next item. Thank you, uh, Mr. Watson, for your explanation. And um, uh, next item, sewer service for the truck stop project. I think you'll have in your packets an aerial, or do you? You have an aerial in your uh, packet on the sod form, I meant on the uh, truck stop project. Yes, sir. You do? Yes, sir. Okay. This project involved a sewer line that's placed under 49 and runs down the property line of Georgia uh, Pecan. It goes all the way to the back of the Georgia Pecan property and then turns right south, south direction and flows to a little station behind the Heritage Hill subdivision behind the credit union. <clears throat> we would like to propose there's a manhole, by the way, a manhole that's about halfway down from Highway 49 down to the end of the property line of Georgia Pecan. It's located about halfway down that building. We would like to move that manhole back toward the highway, Highway 49, right outside of the, the right of way, right on the easement. Move that there. It only makes sense and other people could use it as well. And then from that manhole, install an eight inch sewer line south for about 300 feet or 400 feet, I'm sorry, 399, I believe it is, from that manhole south along the property of the two adjoining property owners, which would be parallel to the easement, uh, I'm sorry, of the right of way. It would be just outside the right of way. That would, that eight inch sewer line would lead to a manhole cover that would not be used. We would like to install it. And then for the future, we would have access for all the people along that area. If anybody else wanted to develop, we would have sewer line already in place. There's a small pecan orchard just down the road from that. I don't know what the future is for all that property, but if, if it's ever developed down toward the, the little strip mall there where the Chinese restaurant is all from that area back to Georgia Pecan, we could pick up all of that in the sewer line. <clears throat> in this project, the Georgia, I meant the uh, truck stop sewer line project, there's a $10,000 supplemental work allowance that is available in that project. If we could use that $10,000, the total price of that project of installing another manhole and 300 feet of uh, eight inch sewer would be the total price of that $16,740. 10,000 of that is in supplemental work allowance. So we may have to pick up $6,700 out of reserves or through savings and other projects uh, for that. My recommendation is that we move that manhole back to the uh, Highway 49 right away and then run an eight inch sewer line southward 400 feet and terminate it in another manhole there for future use. Total project cost $16,740. $10,000 could be taken from that for, from the supplemental work allowance that's available. 
All right, thank you, Mr. Watson. Um, um, Mr. Sewer Service to Georgia Pecan, um, I'm 49. And, and um, uh, Mr. Chairman, let me say one yes. other thing I forgot. Georgia Pecan has already indicated a desire to, to hook into our sewer system there. So we know we have one customer and he's already given us free and unfettered access to an easement along his property in the front or the back just for a right to hook into that sewer. Yeah. Thank you, sir. That, that's what we want. We want more customers to buy in, more customers getting ready for the future, uh, for growth, for, for the city of Fort Valley, for all of our citizens. We're looking for that new subdivision, hopes it, hopefully. Um, I'll entertain a motion um, to move forward with this um, sewer service. I so move. For a motion. Go ahead. So move. <laughs> Oh, I motion. <laughs> motion is second, um, second. for the sewer service. Second the motion. <laughs> All right. Second the motion um, for the sewer service uh, out on 49 by George <clears throat> P. Can. And um, right now, entertain. Uh, we'll show hands of the vote. All those in favor for moving forward with the sewer project for the truck stop. I got it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, next on our agenda, the amendment, um, the salt farm. Um, I guess that's you again, Mr. Mr. Watson. Uh. Before I say anything on this, I, uh, I feel kind of bad. Everything I have tonight, I'm asking for money for, for projects. I, that's not my nature, and I'm, I'm reluctant to do it. Good thing. As a preamble to that, I'd like to say this. 50 60 or 70 years ago, somebody in Fort Valley said it would be a great idea for us to fund a pipeline of natural gas from the cross country pipeline all the way to Fort Valley. Now back 75 years ago in the, in the Delta, Louisiana Delta down there, they, they decided to put in a natural gas pipeline that would come out of Louisiana up through Mississippi, up through Alabama, and cut right across the middle of Georgia up to the eastern seaboard and go all the way up to the northeast. Fort Valley had an opportunity to tap into that natural gas up at uh, Culloden. Somebody, some of our forefathers had the wisdom to say that would be a good thing for us to do, and I'm sure they were criticized enormously for it. But it was a wise move. It took people of vision to do that and made that decision. And the utility commission put in a six inch steel pipe, 25 miles from that cross country pipeline to Fort Valley. And now our citizens are enjoying that decision. Our industries are enjoying it. Our restaurants are enjoying it. It was a wise move then. So I, I'll make myself feel better by asking all these things from you tonight, thinking if you look ahead, these things are gonna be important. We have to pay for them now, but they're going to be important five years, 10 years, 15 years from now. Just like the money that was spent putting utilities out Highway 96 toward the interstate, money well spent, a lot of money well spent. But it, had we not done that, pure flavor wouldn't be here. And if we hadn't done that, other industries will not come. So I say all that to say this. If you, on Highway 96, we, uh, we have gone under Highway 96, I mean, I'm sorry, under Highway 75 at Highway 96. We have water line, gas line, and sewer line under the interstate. We have a lift station right on the corner of the sod farm. We have water going all the way up and turning left up Altman Road. What I'm going to ask for tonight is this. We have recently found out that Dollar General is going to put up a, 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 a building, a store. If you're on 96 going eastbound, and as soon as you cross the Sod Farm property, you come to New, uh, Smyrna Church Road. That's the property line of the Sod Farm. Immediately across the street from that, Dollar General is putting up a store. That is our service line for water and sewer. I would like to make a proposal that we 
run a 12 inch water line from the interstate, so to speak. We have water line already there, a 12 inch line and run it 3,200 feet up to the Dollar General store. And I can also say with some confidence at some point in our lifetimes, that sod farm is going to be something else. Yes. The I property agree. is too valuable to go grass on. It will become something else. And if we have a 12 inch water line in front of it, I don't care what the industry may be. We can provide water. We already have sewer. I agree with you. That, that project will be $72,000. 3,200 feet of that, uh, 3,200 feet of 12 inch PVC is $54,000 of that project. All the other parts that go along with that project are listed on an invoice. I don't know if that's in your packet or not. All of this came about after you got your package. If you don't have it, I'll get it all to you tomorrow. That project is $72,000. We can do it in house. If we did it outside, it would probably be in the neighborhood of $150,000. Our crews can do that. It's a straight line from the interstate up to Smyrna Church Road. We can do that in two or three weeks. We can get water there before Dollar General gets their store there. And we got almost behind the eight ball. We were not aware Dollar General was coming in until the EPD called us wanting to know if we could provide them water to the Dollar General store that we knew nothing about. So thanks to EPD for making the question. That has now caused me to ask you to approve this project of running a 12 inch water line along Highway 96 from the interstate to Smyrna Church Road. Yes, Mr. Chairman, can I, can I say this before you go forward? It, it, the reason I'm, I'm chuckling here is because about a uh, last session, uh, they, somebody was lobbying to DNX Highway 96 all the way up to Highway Haven. And of course, that city, uh, it's in the city all the way up there. Somebody was lobbying to do that. But when they found out that we might... Um, trade our part of our service delivery area off of Russell Parkway. Then they back. It had it had passed in the House. It that that legislation had passed in the House and was going to the Senate. And of course, um, Robert Dickey came when we were getting ready to vote on it at that particular time to make sure that we voted to give up our service delivery strategy part of it so that. What we know now as Bucky's was coming. We didn't know then that was coming, but we know now it was because of Bucky's and because the person that owned the property didn't want to didn't want to deal with us. They wanted to deal with Warner Robbins. And so when we when we agreed, I call it to uh, horse trade. When we agreed to horse trade, uh, Representative Dickey called up there to Senator Kennedy and told him to kill that, kill that bill. And so now, if we don't do this now, that kind of stuff is going to happen all over again. I, I think we ought to make a move on it. And uh, former Commissioner Bob Honeycutt told us that if we don't start moving, then it's going to be snatched from un under us. And I just, I just needed to say that. That's, I, that's exactly the reason that Utility Commission spent a lot of money putting utilities yes all the way out 96, because as you said, that city and that's annex property. Right. Once you put in utilities, the service delivery strategy act passed by the state says another provider cannot cross yours. It's almost like a protective fence. Exactly. So it exactly. Was incumbent upon us to put utilities down there and up Houston or down Houser's Mill Road just as well, back to 247 Connector and then back to Fort Valley. We have encased that whole area protected it from encroachment upon other providers and you can only do that by doing projects like we're talking about right now and the man that made that happen is sitting right up there on the zoom because he wore some shoes out i hear him say all the time he wore some shoes out walking up and down highway 96 to help make this happen uh he might not want me to say that right now but he did and uh, as well as 
uh, the, the fire station that we just put out there on Houses Mill Road. We put that out there to keep from encroachment from happening. So I think we need to keep it moving. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank if you, you need me to make a motion, comments. I'll make a motion. <laughs> okay, I, yeah, we, we'll call for that. Um, just a quick comment. A, a lot of things that are happening yeah. around our cities, just outside of the city limits. We need to keep right. our eyes open, our ears open, um, because if we don't reach out, stretch out, yeah. um, they're gonna they're gonna come right in and take it from us, you know. So we need to right. go ahead and reach out and stretch out. Um, I'll, I'll I'll entertain the motion um, for the for the approval of the Saw Farm Water Program, um, twelve inch, thirty two hundred feet, a twelve inch water line. So move. Thank you. Motion, motion and second. I thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Thompson and Mayor. Um, right now, call for the vote to move on the program, this program. All those in favor, raise your hand. All right, okay, thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> All right. All right, Mr. Watson, you 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 asking, you you reaching hard, hard and hard and hard. Next thing is the chief alone. <laughs> That's all I'm going to ask for tonight. I do make one more. I want to make one more comment. If the utility commission commissioners at the time had not extended utilities up Highway 49, then the high school would not be our customer. Only because of expansion of our utilities are we picking up these customers. And I can promise you, and you know it as well as I do, when that high school is finished, that property all around that area is going to be highly prized and will will be set with utilities. And having said that, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the last item is a GFA loan modification for the high school project. And I think Mr. Jones is here to address that. Or is he left? I'm still here, Neil. No, I got to ask if he got another pair of shoes, though. Uh, <laughs> because you're talking about up 49. Does he have another pair of shoes he could walk out? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Attorney Jones, bring us in. Bring us into the daylight. Tell us what's going on. I, uh, Mayor, thank you for that acknowledgement. But I'll tell you, I, I was just doing the work that the elected officials asked me to do. It was really, uh, I think, uh, uh, Mayor Stumbo who had that vision, and he caught a lot of flack for it. But you know, he was convinced that, like Ned said, uh, it, it wouldn't pay off that day. But in the future, it's going to. There's no question about it. That and. It allowed uh, the city of Fort Valley to try to protect itself from some aggressive annexation from uh, Warner Robins. But it was the, uh, that was a lot of foresight on, on behalf of a lot of people. The um, Jeep alone, as Ned mentioned, has to do with the uh, project at the, uh, the high school, the uh, water project. Uh, you've already approved um, accepting $2.5 million, um, $2.5 million loan to uh, construct and install um, water improvements. The modification is necessary because the when you signed the the modification the loan documents back in October, it provided uh, a date by which you had to spend the money or use the money and start paying it back. What the modification does it pushes that date back so that you don't don't have to start paying it back so soon. Um, the as it stands right now, the loan modification date, uh, the, the loan date that you would have to start paying it back would be April 1st, 2021. The modification pushes, pushes it back to March 1st, 2022. So, uh, and the reason for that too, is that I think there've been some delays in the project due to the inability to um, uh, secure certain uh, valves or, or other equipment, I believe that's correct. There's Ned. water valves that have become scarce. And so what this does is, it, uh, and also, you know, the, uh, the good thing you did with this loan too, is it, it will probably, it's likely that it will wind up being um, forgiven uh, if you use it all. So uh, what this modification does is it extends the period from April 1st, 2021 to March 1, 2022, uh, during which you can use the, uh, the loan that you've already agreed to accept. So it's certainly in the, and uh, it excludes, and, and I mean, it's in, and it's in the best interest of the utility commission to do this. Um, GIPA doesn't get anything out of it. They just want you to use the money and give you enough time to, to use it. Any questions for uh, uh, Attorney Jones from the commissioners or mayor? 
And let me say, I think you have a, a copy of the modification of the promissory note and loan agreement in your packet. And the only thing that changes in anything that you've done is extending the period that you have in which to uh, complete the project and use the money uh, and extend the date uh, by which you would have to start paying it back if you have to pay it back. Also said, if we use it up, would that be a problem, uh, Attorney Jones? I'm sorry, I have missed part of so what for you us said. to use all of it. Well, I, I, you said that if we use up all the money, then that would be it won't be a problem, you know. But if we don't use up all the money, what happens then? I'm talking about the the full amount, two million five hundred thousand. I think the anticipation is that you're going to use it, and I believe um, if you use it all, then it it I have to go back and look again, but I believe it, it it allows for the possibility for that loan to be forgiven completely. Yeah. So I suspect you, I suspect you're going to use it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Any other questions for Attorney Jones? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Thompson. Um, right now, I entertain a motion. Any further discussion? Mayor, you have any, any questions for Attorney Jones on this um, G for loan and the modification payback date? No, sir. I, I was trying not to make all the motions, but it sounded like a given to me. Well, I, I entertain move. a motion, Commissioner Thompson. <laughs> I, <don't move. laughs> I, I, I offer a Oh. <laughs> Go, ahead. Go ahead. I withdraw mine and second it. Go ahead. Okay. I offer a motion that we um, um, extend the modification uh, of the GFA loan from April 1st, 2021 to March 1st, 2022. I second. Motion is second. Thank you for the motion and now we call for the vote. All those in favor by show of hands. And, 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 let, and, let me, and let me just say, I think that, um, I think that could be taken, the, that vote can be taken that you are adopting the, uh, the uh, resolution. Resolution. We're adopting right. the resolution. Do I need to say it over, uh, attorney? No, ma'am, I'm sure Penny got it. <laughs> right. Got it. Got it, Miss Penny? Yes, sir. Do, do right. we have to um, re-sign anything? Yes, ma'am, you, you do have to re-sign. Attorney Jones? Uh, yes, ma'am, you do have to re-sign. Um, All right. And, 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 and I'm, I'm assuming that the, the, okay. the same persons that you designated last time to sign the documents would, would re-sign them. OK. All right, thank you, um, uh, Attorney Jones. And that's the last item. Um, next is executive session. I need a motion and um, take us into executive session. I offer a motion that we, uh, at this particular time, that we go into executive session. Second it. I second, motion is second. I'm a show of hands, this vote go into executive session. Thank you, ma'am. Let's go to our executive session link. Thank you um, for everybody for hanging in there with us on this February 8th uh, Public Utility Commission meeting. We are back live out of executive session. I need a motion and a second to bring us out of into back into public order, public meeting. I offer a motion that we um, leave executive uh, session and back into our public uh, meeting second. at this time. Thank you, motion and second. Um, come from executive session in the public meeting by a show of hands to make sure we're on point. I need to see a vote. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Um, everybody, we were just in executive session. There was no vote taken, no action taken. We were there for uh, strictly discussion for personnel and litigation. And Commissioner Thompson, Mayor Williams, 
Is there anything in our hearts and minds clear before we adjourn this meeting? Yes, sir. For the moment, it just keep stopping the spread of this COVID. Yes. Get your vaccine. Yes. All right. Thank you. As, as I said mask. earlier, um, yes. y'all, yeah, yeah, take your time, wear your mask. It takes all of us. It That's takes right. all of us. If you choose to get a vaccine, get the vaccine if you can. Okay. Call the person, call somebody, reach out and touch the elderly, those that are a little, a little slower, sick. Reach out and touch them, call them, go by and give them a wave. People need interaction. It may not be hand to hand, but at least a hello, how are you doing? I want to thank everybody for coming out, for joining us live on Facebook for this meeting. And we look forward to seeing you next time. See y'all later. This meeting is so adjourned.